Josh from Queen City Cinema Club. How are you? Good, man. How about you? I'm doing Good to see you. I mean, yeah, I haven't seen you in forever, man. Yeah, it's been a, been a minute, long minute. I, I think it's funny because we haven't seen you for even longer than this quarantine COVID stuff because it's just, right. just a crazy lives. So, yes, we, uh, you know, we found women to keep us <laughs> in check, and I collected some kids along the way, and yes, we're both exactly. men, men about town with our business interests and the such so it was easier when i lived across the street too because i could just stumble across right. the street but. right exactly yeah maybe we'll maybe we should get you like a little bachelor pad to just so you can come in and <laughs> just so you can come to queen city cinema <laughs> yeah, just so i can see you all right sweet so uh well, i want to talk a little bit about queen city obviously i want to talk about you um yep. and so on so i met josh back in 2017 probably over at blaze yeah. Uh, you were bartending there, and I was a downtown resident and a downtown regular. I'd stumble in there and hang out with you for a little too long and spend yeah. a little too much money. Um, and Josh told me over and over again he was going to open his own place. And I kept on saying to Josh, when are you going to open this new place? And yeah. he, I think I kept on saying it even after you opened the new place that I was surprised. Oh, yeah. you, yes. you needed that encouragement, man. That's what you needed. Yeah, no, you needed you, to give you were shit. Definitely a... Uh, driving force behind that when you would show up every day and say, is that place open yet? I look at Pete as Pete was helping you. I'd be like, is it open yet? Is he, are you done with yeah. construction yet? Yeah. But um, tell me how you started. What came about? How did you do this? How long did you want to do this? Sure. Give me the, uh, the goods for uh, Queen yeah. City. So I would say probably, I don't know, maybe a year or two before we even met, I kind of had the idea. Um, basically, what I was thinking was there's lots of great restaurants and bars downtown Bangor, um, but there's not a lot, and there's a lot of cool events, you know, event-based stuff. So, you know, like the, the Waterfront Concert Series and, you know, we've got cool arts projects down here, like the Symphony Orchestra and Penobscot Theater Company, but those are like one-offs. Um, there is no real every night entertainment option down here. Everything is so far flung. So you have like the movie theater out by the mall, you have, you know, sports arena, but that's way out towards Herman. Um, nothing for, you know, to kind of complement all the great restaurants and bars we have down here. It's time to start building something like that. And uh, <clears throat> I got my master's degree at the University of Maine uh, in history, and I had written my master's thesis on science fiction film. And so, you know, I'm a cinephile and really wanted to kind of put that to work for myself and do something that I enjoyed and I was passionate about. Um, and so uh, the idea was basically to open up like a small 40 to 60 seat independent movie theater where we could show old school stuff, classics, cults, foreign films, stuff that you can't get at the regular movie theaters. Uh, finding a space for something like that down here was a challenge to say the least. I looked just about everywhere I could and didn't really find anything super appropriate. Um, so kind of sat on it for a little bit one night sitting in my room, looking around at all my stuff, you know, like I see your, you know, all your bobbleheads and comic books behind you. You know, I got kind of the same deal along with a huge film collection yeah. and uh, just kind of dawned on me. I'm like, I'm gonna have to sell all this stuff if I want to do something else. Cause I was getting old, you know, I was about to turn 40 and I was bartending, you know, 60 to 80 hours a week and just beat up from the feet up. And I just really wanted to do something, uh, one where I was working for myself and earning for myself and to something that I was like, not that I wasn't passionate about bartending, but like something a little more added to it, you know, um, after doing it for 20 years, it got a little tiring. So, <laughs> um, so then I said, okay, what do I have for capital? You know, I, I have my collection, so I might as well put that collection to work for me. And now I'm not afraid to say that basically what I did was move my, living room downtown and then charge people to hang out in it so instead of doing like a you know a large-scale movie theater we did private rooms um so we have a four-seater and an eight-seater you come in with your private party we can add seats you know for slightly larger parties but the basic idea is that you 
you have your own room, you have your own setup with the speakers and the uh, big screen and the projector and everything. And you can use that to watch movies, play video games, have a birthday party, stuff like that. Um, I mean, it's a little less creepy than being in your actual living room and charging. Right. Yeah. Because absolutely. I feel like. <laughs> yeah, especially nowadays, you know, you know, I can't just have strangers coming into my house. So, but, um, but it was nice because you also had the ability to, as you were getting ready to open this place was to talk to people like myself at the bar and right. just be like, not like promoting your new place, but more like having casual conversations about movies and being like, oh, and I'm working right. on this place. And right. it, it brought a lot of the people that live in or work in downtown yep. who like you can see it. We had people from Nocturnum and all kinds of people come right in to visit you and hang out in your spot, yep. which is pretty cool. And that's like really my biggest, uh, and I knew it would be just because being in the restaurant industry for so long, knowing so many people, but I mean, you know, people like you and, uh, pretty much the entire Nocturnum crew, they're here, you know, three, three nights a week, sometimes three, four nights a week, every Sunday they come in and, you know, they kept us afloat through that first patch that, you know, is usually pretty rough for small business owners. I had the full support of, you know, Abe Firth from OBC mm. and, you know, you and, you know, Gene and everybody it was really helpful and welcoming. And it was good to have that kind of background already set up. I think Cal likes to finish his sales day for OBC at Queen yep, City a lot of yep, times. So he can swing in there and he'll text me or call me and be like, hey, can you clock me out? I just want to play video games for a while. So. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So it's pretty cool. I mean, I went there opening night. Uh, we booked yep. or opening weekend. Or, yeah, what's opening night? It was it July? It was yeah. a Friday the 13th. Wasn't July it? 13th. Yep. 2018. And, uh, 18, yeah. And we yep. rented it. So I actually had the experience. Sometimes when you talk to people and you try to tell them about it and you haven't had the experience. Sure. We went in. Uh, one, one big hobby family. So my good friends and myself went in there. We uh, came up early, ordered a beer, got a cool craft beer. Uh, we were able to pick the movie out. Um, I forget what movie we watched. Some sort of the uh, the medicine one, the one that uh, cure for wellness. Cure for wellness, yeah. Which was freaking weird. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I recommend that to people sometimes, and usually, and there's a lot of things like that because I do have kind of a different taste. You know, I do like the yeah. cult stuff and the weird stuff, and a lot of my collection is that. So people be like, "What should I watch?" And I give them something, and they come out of the theater with just like you know, that face. Like, what the experience just was fun, but that movie was weird. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But we yeah. were able to, like, order a beer. We had a beer. We brought the beer in. We sat there. But the coolest thing I thought was, and one of the ways to explain your place to a lot of people is the fact that it's like your own living room. Right. We all looked at each other and we're like, hey, does everybody need a pee? Oh, you need a refill on beer? Hold on. Let's grab the remote, press yeah. pause, walk out to the bar, sure. order a beer. I'll be right back. We get that beer and we take a leak. And then yeah. come back and everybody comes back and you press play. Or this is really quiet. Can we turn the volume up? Or it's too loud. Turn the volume down. Right. And we didn't take advantage of it because we had we wanted to use that bathroom break. But the idea where you can press a buzzer yeah. and you or boss will come bring a beverage or right. food to your seat or order nachos and they're not ready yet. So you go in, watch your movie, and then you'll swap. You know, all right. that stuff is really cool. And the fact that it's your own group of people. Right. You don't have so you to yell at someone. And, right. You can sit there and you can talk amongst yourselves if you want. You can tell people to – Shut, Shut up, up. <laughs> you know, and you don't have to worry about being some random person that's going to, you know, get into it with you and just be like, hey, dad, shut up, you know. Um, but I mean, that's, and that's like your goal because you wanted that theater thing, but there's more to it. You know, you have your bar right. and you have your board game area and you have your video game area. Right. And, and speak, we spoke before we started recording about our buddy Randy, who used to come in a lot with myself. And we used to sit at the bar and just work on our laptops. Like we had... So we could either, I could right. either work at OBC downtown by myself, yep. working on the schedule or designing a label, or I could go sit at Queen City, have a pint, sit there, do my work, every once in a while make a comment, have a conversation with you or boss or Randy, yeah. and then go back because it was just a fun environment to be in. It felt like I was in here. It felt like it's, I was in my own den. Yeah. And I mean, now we have like 4,000 square feet and we're still kind of like, I still think we're pretty much the best kept secret down here. So even though we've done really well, you know, I, I pay all my bills. I've taken a bunch of trips. Mm -hmm. well, you know, we're still alive through this whole coronavirus mess. Um, it's still a super chill atmosphere. You have, you know, a lot of room to yourself. Everything is kind of sectioned out. So you have, you know, a booth or something or like the private rooms that you can go into and kind of uh, dictate your own experience. It's very customizable. So I mean, you could also like we could you could do a meeting if you wanted to. You could play video oh, games, yeah. whatever you yep. can hook up to either the internet or your system. 
which is pretty cool because that's not you have an experience that uh, there's other banks and things like that have boardrooms right the tv or projector on the wall but nothing has the comfortability as of this right. leather and yeah we have done reclining chairs and, right we have done off-site corporate stuff uh people that want to get out of the office for their meeting or whatever um so that's the other thing is just super flexible um you can just come up you know you, you come to me you say i want to do this thing i'm probably going to say yes you know as long as it's within legal means and it's going to yes. make a little bit of money you know um i mean all kinds of crazy stuff we've done goth goth dance parties we've done uh geez I, we did a, an exhibition right before we closed. We did an art ex exhibition. This lady who goes around and takes photos of chairs. And on this, you know, it's like, it was called My Roadside Attraction. She put up all her work on the side, on the wall in the theater, and then did a PowerPoint presentation on the big mm. screen. You know, and we had like good, good stuff for that. We've had a ton of independent filmmakers come through and show their movies. Um, we've done local film. We do trivia, we do, mm -hmm. you know, uh, bands all the time, lots of hardcore and metal. Gaming competitions, I know that one's one a fun one too. Yeah. Like you get your we, Mario yeah. Kart, your basketball one, your football yeah, one. Yeah, video game tournaments. Um, so it's really just kind of, you know, it's like such a flexible space, so open and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, my forte is event planning. So, yeah, pretty easy to come in and figure something out. One of the coolest things I've seen, and I've been part of it because I was with Will, uh, from BT PCTC on, um, what was it? When we did the first Mario Kart, I think it was. I came back because it was right after I had my mouth surgery too. So I was like yeah. zoned out, just trying to watch and it's in pain. And uh, I remember just the people who weren't even competing. They were just there to be there. Yeah. And it was like one of the benefits you can get from something like video game competitions is people who just want to watch people is, you know, thinking both sides of it, entertainment and business, business for you, like, it's great to have your place packed and people buying food and beer, right. pays the bills, but also a good group of people just of a community space. Right. Like the benefit you'll get is some people would pay into the, the, the competition to hopefully win some money or a gift card or whatever, but also just to be there to watch. And if they lose, maybe they still stay around because I'm going to go play Mario Kart in the other room because there's another TV with right. it on it, or I'm going to grab a beer and hang out and watch my friend play. And right. it's that added aspect that, it's just a community place. It's a place for people to gather. For sure. So that was like a huge part of kind of what I was trying to build too, is I was sitting at Blaze every night and more and more, you know, I was there for four years towards year three and four. It was getting hard to get people to pay attention to me at the bar. Not that I need like all their attention, but. <laughs> oh, me, oh, oh me. Yeah. I want, I want to know what you want to drink, you know? So like, and they just sit there buried in their phone, buried in their phone. I'd look over at one of the tables and there's eight people sitting there that obviously all came together to hang out and all eight of them are sitting there on their phones. So we really wanted to bring that social aspect back to going out, you know, uh, give people another outlet where they're coming together, spending time with each other, and they're engaged. So that was kind of, you know, the movies was the first step. I wanted to have a movie theater where you could sit and have a nice craft beer. Um, but then we were like, okay, what else can we put in here to bring people in? That's when we came up with, you know, the console stations for video games. Uh, we have a huge board game collection. Um, and and you so, can bring your stuff in. Like if right. you wanted to, like we, yeah. Taylor and I played there before too, we've talked about, know you have all bunch of different things but maybe you have a specific risk game that you like to play with a certain theme right. bring that in sit right. down buy a beer have a i mean to be fair i do have all the risks well i know that but I just, <laughs> this is an example. But yes no i mean i i have like uh i think pandemic uh i had people come in and bring their own pandemic board for whatever reason yeah. but that's totally fine i don't care you know if you're coming in and you're buying food and drink then come in and hang out and we can talk about some pop culture stuff and you know Guess, guess I mean, we had, I mean, Randy and I had arguments and discussions. That's it, d discussions. Right. The boss at, behind the bar about different Marvel things or yeah. Star Wars things right. or just life in general. And it was just nice to be able to have that because it feels a little bit more intimate than it is any other bar that right. you go to. But those people out there who like myself, who like craft beer and who like craft beer like you, can be okay because okay, this bar is not a craft beer bar but has someone who's worked in the industry for four years, who's the one ordering the beer right. to put in the bar. So when you go in there, you're not going to get your, you're going to get, you have your light beers and stuff like that that you yeah. people like, your, your, your macro beer. But you have, I mean, obviously you buy a bunch from OBC. Um, yeah. You buy a bunch from all the local breweries around the area in Maine, 
New England, anywhere you can get your hands on it. But you have good beer. So you're like, you get the experience that you had at Blaze with good beer, but you also get the little bit more low key. Um, right. I, I like Blaze, but just saying less stuffy, less high end. Sure. You get the you get the down home community in your living room experience, right. not Absolutely. in your formal living room, in your yeah. hangout living room experience, right. uh, which is pretty cool. And that's something that I've been in there just sitting there watching people, and they like it's just these groups of people that you don't see at other bars yep. because it's not their scene. Yeah, you know, Queen City Cinema Club is now their scene, which is pretty yep. cool. Yeah, we tried to me and boss. I mean, I I go I you know I used to go out a fair amount or whatever. I'm not. I'm not like a party boy or anything, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, Boston really go at, at all. We kind of wanted to build a place for a place for people to go out to that, you know, people that don't usually go out, they have a place where they can come in and feel comfortable. And, you know, and that, that lends to that, uh, like you're talking about the conversations, like that's my favorite part of it is just sitting behind the bar and talking about comic books and talking about movies and talking about music, you know, cause it's all fair game and it's all built in. Like, you know that you can come here and there's going to be somebody here, even if it's just one of us, that mm. you can get into some deep, deep, you know, pop culture conversations about, you know. Um, and the best thing is you and Boss are different, too. You're yeah. friends, but you're different. If anybody doesn't know, Boss also is part of Queen City. He works behind the bar. He's there a lot of times. That jo- When Josh is not there, Boss is there. Right. Um, they're the only two people that are there, basically. Tiffany's there as well, Josh's wife. But... Yeah. Um, yeah, the, he's boss is the other person if you don't know boss but boss is a very unique individual <laughs> yes that, that's <laughs> understatement <laughs> i feel like that yeah that is an understatement but it's just different you can have a conversation with boss and a conversation with josh it'd be completely different conversations or the same conversation depending on what it is right you might come in there and josh is playing a certain record boss would might play a different record right and so there is that experience and there's a little bit for everything everybody there yep but seriously, I've tried some beers that I haven't had anybody else, anywhere else at your place. Yeah. Um, I just had some experiences. I mean, when, excuse me, our friend Addie and Casey, Addie's sisters came into town and um, we're like, what are we going to do with these people? They're not go to a bar kind of person. We don't want to go to a restaurant. We don't want to hang out in someone's house or anything like that. We're like, let's go to Queen City. And we played Cards Against Humanity around a table. A few of us who drink beer had beer. Some people didn't. Some people got a snack. And it was an experience that like you also, if you not, I don't want people to spill a drink or spill something in your place. It's spilling a drink in your own living room that you don't have to clean up. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you know, uh, my wife, Tiffany, the smartest thing she ever said to me, cause I was kind of freaking out as we're like building up to it, you know, and opening and everything. I'm like, is this even going to work? Like this is the dumbest idea ever. Why would anybody come here? They, you can play video games at home. You can play board games at home. You watch movies. Like what's the, point really you know and she said people want to do what they do at home but they want to feel like they're doing something else so it's actually perfect it's like it's your home away from home that's corny when when it's safe to do things as a community you know whatever that may be whatever your your beliefs are i think something like queen city is going to thrive even more when people are okay to go out and be in community because all of us for two months have been playing video games and watching movies at our own house by ourselves or with your significant other that you've only ever seen them over two months right that when it feels safe for us to go out i might call up addy and casey and mike and karen and and, and their other group and be like let's rent the theater out there so we can get together Yep. you know they live in corinth and my friends live in bangor we live in orrington so it's like let's get somewhere where it's more centralized instead of having to drive out to someone's house that has beer has food and be with other people, but still do what we've been doing for two months, Absolutely. <laughs> watching movies or anything yeah. like that. Um, and he does have a, Josh has an insanely big collection. Sometimes I do believe that he opened a business in order to make ex- purchases like movies and video games an expense for the business and not his own personal I, wallet. I would but, say that that <laughs> is uh, probably as accurate as it can be, as long as that's okay with the IRS. No, I, yeah. you know. <laughs> We do, we do, we do everything by the books, but yeah, um, I would say that's a added benefit is when I walk away from this at some point, my movie collection will probably be significantly larger. We got about, we're about 1700 films right now, which is the difference. Like you say, you could own an automotive shop where you repair and uh, renovate old cars. Right. If you're a big car enthusiast, 
you do that and likely right. you might purchase a company vehicle for sure that you renovate and, and restore to your drive around so people know what you do right it's a business expense because it's yeah. what you do no, absolutely. so i so i i joke about it but it's kind of funny because if i owned my own place like josh's too i would every new popular movie that came out i would be purchasing it so right. someone can watch it at my place but right. also so that i can borrow it and go home when i clock sure. out at night and watch it at home absolutely or, Stay there and have a drink and watch it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um, it's just kind of funny because I'm always like, Josh is like buying, like a walk. When I used to sit in there all the time when I was living downtown, yeah. he'd come in with a stack of movies and I'm like, right. eh. Yeah. Josh wanted to see four put, of those. That's why he bought base. those. <laughs> yep, exactly. And, uh, <laughs> and it's cool because you pay for the theater yep. rental and you can do whatever you want, minus a few things, right. whatever's legal. Right. Um, but then you can watch a movie you just hey i want to borrow that movie and you bring the movie in there and do that so it's just nice so yep. uh it makes it easy for people to see movies they maybe missed in the theater but one on a big screen absolutely and how about your big screen is your bigger screen is how big uh 19 and a half feet wide okay and yep. then you have one that's slightly smaller than small, that? yeah um no sorry 15 and a half feet wide on the big one mm -hmm. um and about 10 feet wide on the smaller one but it approximates the experience you know i mean i there's part of me, I almost like it a little bit better. I basically just put the biggest screens I possibly could in those rooms. So it's almost like a personal IMAX, you know, you just like you're sitting in your seat and that thing takes up the entire wall. Um, and it's, it's pretty awesome. And this July, like you talked about July 13th will be our two years, yep. which is unbelievable. I can't believe how fast that's gone. Yeah. I feel like it was just yesterday where Pete was in there laying, putting brick around for the bar right. and like putting yeah. the bathrooms in and talking about how you had to add another bathroom and all that stuff. Right. That's, it feels like it was just yesterday. It's crazy. <laughs> it's flown by. Um, um, you know, because now we're look, we're like in that mode of like, kind of like that was like our birth and like our you know infancy, and now we're like moving into like developmental stages and kind of adolescence, you know. And but you you did it right too. I think it's like the two year mark is the t mark to you know it's viable at this point. Right. So it's not like Josh saw three months of like amazing sales and business and was like let's add more it was you have two years of yeah i'm here uh two years of uh experience and money coming in yeah. knowing that it's a viable business to add right. on speaking and of knowing, adding on yeah. josh was in the process of doing this right 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 when so, yeah now now we know what works we can kind of pick and choose what kinds of events we hold uh and so i mean i guess this is a pretty good segue into like our current situation which I'll be honest, like for me, it's actually, it was kind of like a blessing in disguise. Um, it kind of happened at the exact right time. So we had another thousand square feet on the other side of a door uh, in our same area. And um, it came to the point where I finally got the landlord to sit down and we worked out a deal for a five year lease for the entire place. Uh, for a downtown location, it's an amazing deal, and I couldn't really pass it up. And I wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do with that space, but I signed on for it. And then we were like, okay, how are we going to renovate this place while we're open? And along comes the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, all right, I guess we're going to close and do everything. And then when we come back, we'll be bigger and better than ever. And so Josh is closed right now, obviously, because you yeah. had to, or you just, you decided to close before that, right? We, there was no regulations yet. Right. We closed on March 15th. Um, okay. I, you know, I think I was maybe the first or one of the first people down here to do so. Yeah, we had the 16th, so. Yeah. The thing is, is our business is predicated upon people touching things uh, because we have like a, you know, common area for the arcade and common area for the board games. And I sat there for two days, you know, I follow the news, I read a lot of Twitter and stuff, and I was just sitting there watching like little kids take one thing off the shelf, put it right back, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and I just, I want the best for my customers, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So like, I needed to figure out a way to make all of that work, and that wasn't going to happen in the span of one day. And then of course, you know, a couple of days later, everybody down here was closed. Yeah. And the state, you know, the state was releasing guidance and everything like that. So it, it just come to a point where I, I thought it was inevitable and it was time to sit down, come up with a plan, figure out if this was going to be viable moving forward, get in touch with the bank and see what we could do and just kind of work towards, you know, 
keeping this place viable and you know even past viable you know successful which it has I mean, been. public image too is good not that you were looking for that as a you were obviously looking out yeah. for your customers but we, were t we talked about it for obc right. it was like you don't want to be the person that's open that closes last right because you look bad that you weren't looking out for the customers right but you also no one's going to complain about someone closing early at this point it's the who's going to open first open last that crap right. but like no one complained that you close the 15th and we close the 16th right. and such and such close the 17th right it was if someone stayed open until the end of march when they actually were like come down and like you can't open anything right or whatever it was a couple weeks later or a week later um that person who like pushed the boundaries the, right. the restaurants that are open up randomly replaces those are the people that are going to be in the news no one cares that josh's place closed on the 15th right. um but it's nice and i said mark mentioned the other day mark uh, Horton from Woodman's and yeah. uh, OBC, he uh, mentioned to me, he's like, it's kind of funny because he's been working, obviously, not working, working, but he's like, he's not going to sit back and go, okay, Woodman's is closed. I'm taking two months off. Right. Um, but he also helps run OBC. So there's that aspect of back and forth on that stuff and decision making and stuff. And we're expanding our patio at OBC. So he's involved in that and stuff. But he laughed at us. He goes, Woodman's opened 15 years ago. Even Heather and Mark opened Woodman's 15 years ago. Uh, right around now, like uh, they opened right up. Or, I think it was the beginning of June, so it was right after graduation. And he's like, "It's my 15 year sabbatical." He's like, "I don't like it's <laughs> silver linings." I mean, Taylor and I talked about it on our right. uh, website, married into this, that we took the silver linings in this situation instead of just looking at all the negatives. And the silver linings was I worked every Thursday, Friday, Saturday night, right till late. She was at home those nights by herself. We've literally seen each other every single day yep. for multiple hours a day. I'm working on my laptop. She's working on her laptop. We've been out to have lunch together. Yep. I've had Saturdays off where I can drive. We just went for drives places. Yep. Um, and so the, the, the silver linings for Queen City is the fact that you were able to, first of all, you've been open for two years. You get a couple of weeks just to go. Yep. And just be like, okay, now I don't have to go into Queen City today. I can stay home and not worry about anything. Um, but the other side of it is now you're doing the, the idea of doing an expansion. Yeah. Um, yeah. What is the plan for that? Like, what's the... So we've started to formulate something that I think is going to be pretty cool. Um, that's going to kind of build in some of the social distancing stuff and add to the functionality and the aesthetic of the place. So obviously the movie theaters, you're, you're in a private party anyway. Um, so we actually look at that as being an opportunity uh, where the larger movie theaters are closed. We might get some more of those customers coming in. You know, I mean, we really want to go out. We want to go see a movie, but we still can't, you know, go to the big place. This is a solution for those people, you know, you bring in your own private party and watch a movie or play video game or whatever. Um, we actually took out the uh, arcade as it was in the back room. Um, so we've got the carpet ripped up and everything is cleared out of there. So we're just going to put down a new floor. That's actually going to be our new kitchen. Um, so we started working on some food. We just want to kind of step it up. Uh, basically our food as it was, was just like a stopgap measure to be able to open and sell beer and, you know, get our liquor license and everything like that. We were running two air fryers and frozen chicken fingers and cheese sticks from Sam's club. And people love it. I mean, it's good. It came out, you know what I mean? For what it was, mm -hmm. the prices were unbelievably cheap, you know? <laughs> so like you could come in and have a night out for 20 or 30 bucks with a couple of beers and a full stomach and, you know, a couple hours of gaming under your belt. But um, I'm, I'm a huge, you know, well, I'm a, I'm just a huge person that eats a lot. So <laughs> I, I, food's really important to me and it's been on my mind since we opened that I really wanted to step it up. So we're going to go kind of the same deal. It's going to be, you know, smaller plates, uh, you know, necessarily a tapas menu, but, you know, um, kind of small shareable dishes uh, and just kind of if you think about us, you know, doing like the, you know, chicken fingers, cheese sticks, you know, onion rings, stuff like that. We're going to take that up to another level. Um, so, you know, we're going to do like Pineland Farm cheese curds. Um, we did some teriyaki mushrooms the other night at home that we were looking to put on the menu. We want to do a lot of vegan stuff. Uh, sliders. Uh, probably a little bit of pizza and you know, we get some other ideas that I'll kind of keep under my hat for <laughs> yeah. now. 
you know, once, once it starts ramping up, we'll put some stuff out and people will get an idea of what the new menu is still going to be affordable, but you know, at the same time, like just want to step up our game as far as like the quality of food. And also, you know, we'd get sometimes we'd have a party of 50 or something walk in and they order 70 orders of chicken fingers and I've got two air fryers. Like mm-hmm. it does not work. So we needed to ramp up our production as well. Um, so in order for us, you know, when we do get busier to be able to keep up with everything. Um, so then on the other side, so we'll have the theaters um, on the other side, that's where the arcades is going to be now. And so we'll still have the consoles um, and we're also bringing in some stand up arcade machines. Uh, what the exact balance on that's going to be, <laughs> not entirely sure yet, but you know, um, pinball will definitely be a component and uh, we're also going to expand our, console offerings like i just had 15 systems sitting out back collecting dust so those will all come out i've got to hook up on some nice tvs and so our solution for the um social distancing and everything we're actually going to build plexiglass booths so you'll have your gaming station like you had before in your booth but now you'll just have plexiglass on either side of you light that up with some nice leds um and then you know, you could, you're separated, but you still see everybody. So it's still like a social atmosphere. Uh, you get kind of that flashy, reflective, all the lights kind of bouncing through and off and refracting off everything. And I think it's just going to be like a really cool um, appearance. And the, the nice thing about it is uh, where the theater is now, we have those windows boarded up and covered up with our uh, logo. Um, on the left side where the arcade will be, uh, there's actually big open windows right now. Those will stay open. We'll have like some custom uh, shades for the daytime. Mm-hmm. But at night, those things will open up and you'll just, you'll be coming right down Main Street and you'll just see flashing lights everywhere. I think it's going to kill for business. So That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool because it's also like that aspect of now it's its own little spot because I mean, if you think about it, the arcade area was like, no one really, oh, if you didn't walk in to right. go there, you had to like go around the corner and see it. Excuse me. And it was just all in one room where this, or now this looks like it may be like expanded out a little bit. Yep. Excuse me. And uh, flashy, like you said, like it has that lights in it. Yeah. It's not in the corner. It's just, it's like this, like, I don't know. It won't be like all those people in. Yeah. It won't be like overwhelming, crazy. Like some of those yeah. arcades I go to, like we went to, well, I won't, I won't name any. Yeah. You know, I've been to arcades. Lots of arcades. Yeah. I go to, when I travel, I go to arcades and do market research. And sometimes it's a little overwhelming. Um, but the way this will be set up, I think is really going to be conducive to kind of still having your own kind of quiet space and not having to worry about people running by and all that. And it'll allow us, you know, with, um, everything will now be behind, we're going to have a new counter set up, uh, so that you can rent board games, video games, everything else that will allow us to track everything. Mm -hmm. If it goes out, we sanitize it. If it can't be sanitized, it goes into quarantine, um, And that's our basic approach. If it comes down to it and health inspector says, no, you just can't do board games, then so be it. We didn't make any money off it anyway. It was just like an added value thing. Bring in your own games, you know, something along those lines until we get through some more of this and figure out exactly where the science is on it. Um, You know, that's a necessary evil possibly. But I think, I think even, you know, just with, if we're able to track everything and clean everything and then put things away, you know, once they've been used, if they can't be cleaned, you know, give it some time and then we'll put it back out and we'll just have a constant circulation. So we have enough and we're just trying to keep people from pawing through them and everybody touching them and, you know, Mm -hmm. just trying to be, like I said, as safe as we can for our customers. And that's awesome. Yeah. It, it is a tough one when you have that, that, I mean, well, let's say luckily this didn't happen three months after you opened because that could right. have been exactly. detrimental. Um, so, the other part of it, it's like the benefit that you do have the ability to do some sort of that thing. And you can go in there. Someone rents a theater. You can go in there and spray some sanitizer down, clean the seats down, right. spray the remote down, clean the remote up or whatever. Um, and it'd be more controlled because you know who's in that theater at that time. So like if I go in there with Taylor, it's us two. We know it's only us two. And we can be in there. Even if we wear a mask to walk in right. to see you and say you, hi to you, whatever. Once you walk into that room and close that door, you should be able to take that mask off. No problem. Watch the movie because it's only you in there. Absolutely. And if you press the buzzer, maybe you put a mask on so that yeah. the person coming in or whatever. But you can be safe and, and it's nice that 
hopefully this will work out for you guys because yeah. you know we yeah, we mean, all miss it <laughs> right, absolutely and i miss i miss being here too i mean like you were talking about you know so over linings like i've gotten to spend more time with my family over the last two months and it's been amazing like i get to hang out with the kids every day i get to see my wife every day which you know for the first two years of our relationship was not the case <laughs> um, but also you know it, like like you said if we had gone through this and taken that other side and started remodeling and gotten the remodel done in february and then had <laughs> to do it all again like you know, I'm just, kind of, and this place has kind of been charmed that way. Um, you know, I was lucky to find the spot. I was lucky to get it. It was a little bit of a struggle to actually get in here. Um, and then just kind of things have worked out really well as far as, you know, we've just, and I think a big part of it is attitude. You have a positive attitude and, you know, that's your choice when you're a small business owner or somebody like you that, you know, might as well be like running you know, multiple spots and yeah. you, you have to have that positive can do attitude you have a little bit of luck but you know as long as you're following your heart really as corny as that sounds like that's going to make all the difference in the world and we know that our customers and our fans are the number one priority out of all right. this because we know without them none of us would be able to do what we do right. um and so when you say when you come out and you say you're knowing and you're thinking about what you can do to help even before any sort of guidelines come out for theaters or anything in those lines because you do fall in that weird you're the theater but you're not a theater right. and you're not a restaurant but you're not a restaurant you're a bar but you're not a bar so you're like this weird spot but you're like okay maybe there is no guidelines for you because there is you're right. not you don't fall in that category but we have our own guidelines we're going to look at i mean i could send you the bar one uh the restaurant one you can look at retail shops and say what are people doing what are we allowed to do right. and then you can create your own yep. and go we're going to be over the top even if it's not necessary even if they say don't worry about, you know, sanitizing board games or whatever. They will, but right. um, that way you have that aspect. Of you. I'm just looking out for you guys. Yep. You know, if you do have a risk game at home, bring it in. Right. If you're playing with your own risk game, then you're not going to risk Absolutely. getting anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or same thing with a video game. If you do want to come play, you know, on your Xbox 360 or Xbox, um, yeah, Xbox or original Xbox, and you have original Xbox controllers, right. why not bring them in? Exactly. Plug them in yourself so you can use your own Xbox controller right. and then you unplug it and you bring it home with you. Right. There's no reason why you would say, no, 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 don't do that. I mean, we already had people doing that on a regular so, basis. You know, um, yeah, I would say just, you know, um, one of the big things for Queen City Cinema Club, it's always been a big thing. Uh, me and Boss are both born and raised here. Uh, we both went to Herman High. I went to University of Maine Orno for my bachelor's mm -hmm. and master's. And I spent, you know, a number of years down here downtown Bangor working and so we are just you know everything we do socially conscious trying to involve the community mm -hmm. it's very important to us and I think it shows like the love that we get back from everybody and we just like really appreciate it like I don't know how many I haven't gotten my numbers yet from 320 Inc but I'm pretty sure we sold like a truckload of shirts you know we, we did a quarantine, a quarantine C, cinema club yeah. shirts and i had so many pictures pop up on my feed of people i don't even know just tagging me and being like yeah got our shirts today so i'm excited to see what, but that's the kind of thing you know what i mean like nobody had to buy a shirt what are you you're not gonna wear it out you know <laughs> you're wear it on your couch but you know people put that money in and just as a, and literally is you know yes it was a cool shirt but just to support us you know yeah and it's like what we said we had people at orner brewing company it was so funny because I felt like people at the first couple of weeks of ordering pickup or delivery were like, we want to give you a hundred dollars. Right. The beer coming to my house is bonus. Right. Like it was so crazy how the experience was and how easy going people were at the beginning. Like, Hey, I won't be able to get there till six 30. I know it said four to six, but we're really busy. No worries. Come when you can. We're home all yeah. night. And it was like people literally, I think if we just said we don't have any beer to give you, but we'll take donations. I yeah. think we would have made, the same oh, yeah. amount of money in the first two weeks <laughs> like sure. it was like hey how about you buy gift cards you had people buy gift cards like so it's just that aspect of just wanting to give you money and getting something right. in return is nice so yes i'm chatting with drew and seth uh in a couple of weeks uh for the podcast for 320 inc and we'll yep. talk about the tip jar initiative and stuff like yep. that so um it's nice to see that they did that and my buddy brian uh keezer uh speaking of that i think the three of us are on the bctc thing um is it tomorrow uh, wednesday night i'll be there yeah 
I'm here. I'm there too. And I think uh, Brian Keyes is there too. Oh, so cool. three people. I mean, so uh, this actually comes out on Wednesday, so it'll be that night. Yeah. Um, but it's um, just nice seeing on, on rest coffee with Brian Keyes. He did one too. So his was just a basic logo, but it was like, yeah. he got a bunch of people to order one and he, did, I don't think he did his three, three twenty inc. I think he did it through another company that was doing it, but Emerson is just, just doing one now too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think three twenty was one of the first to really like, do this yeah, they like give exactly. something to give to a customer who gave you money because right. really a lot of those people including you know pete or i just saw they say mentioned pete because pete posted his picture his online yeah. i'm sure he would have given you 20 bucks oh, yeah. for sure and then been like no i don't want anything back maybe a pint when i get back when you open back yeah. up or something yeah, he he wanted to give you money but instead he got the t-shirt as well so it was pretty cool yeah absolutely um yeah, and you know, big shout out to 320 for doing that. Like, that's just, it's an awesome idea, and it's really cool that they're willing to, you know, put that effort in for everybody. So, and I'm sure it keeps them busy because I know for a fact. I mean, we've been two months without us ordering anything. I ordered something at least once a month from them for OBC, yeah. and we've gone two months without ordering anything. So now they'll probably be able to keep most of their staff on and paid right. by doing these things because they did. I mean, you see the checks that they've given out to, to donations for things. It's right. been insane. Yeah. And so, so they've been able to raise some money. It's pretty cool. And the other part of that is, you know, not that I wouldn't have gone there anyway, but I may have done more shopping around. But now that, you know, we had that experience together, the first person I'm calling when I need new merch is Seth. Yeah. You know, and that's because they were there for me when I needed them. And, you know, I mean, it's all about loyalty. So, you know, that's pretty cool. To get the new merch in, that, that's where I'm going. I feel like that's the shirt you should have just in general. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of requests afterwards. Like, I need this. I need this. I'm like, it's been on sale for a month. Pay attention to the yes. Facebook page. Well, Limited also, edition. watching someone walk into your building or seeing them walk in the street or see a picture of them online wearing that shirt, you go, right, that's the guy or that's the girl. Or that's the woman who right. paid for it when I was not yeah. open. Oh, no, for and sure. So on. And that way, you know, that's, that's there. Yep. And same thing we did. We did the All Together shirt for our All yep. Together beer we did. And then I was like, oh, let's make this. And he was like, and I was like, no, that's it. When this is all over, when we open back up, we'll remove that from the website. Yep. That sure will no longer be made again. We may make a variation for other times. Maybe we'll, I mean, this is one of those things that my birthday is Friday. And so, you know, like on Facebook, Happy it birthday. says, you should, thanks, man. You should donate money or you should put a cause so right. people could donate money for your birthday. And last year I did the Bangor Humane Society, which I would do again because I love the Bangor Humane Society. But then I was like thinking, I'm like, we donated to the Restaurant Community Workers Foundation. And it's like, maybe that's the one I do this year. So it's like, yeah. maybe we'll have a shirt all year long available on our website. Yep. Always available. So when you buy that shirt, we pay for the shirt. And the rest of the money goes to the, uh, you know, the Restaurant Workers Community Foundation so that they can replenish the funds that they've given away during this time. So that next time something like this happens, hopefully it doesn't there's money in that fund. So like maybe something else comes out later, but I feel like the shirt for this time is done. Yeah, for sure. And the other thing is, I mean, like that's a really good point about like, I could see somebody walk in and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna buy you a beer, you know, <laughs> or like, here's a couple extra cheese sticks for you, you know, but like just be able to thank them uh, personally face to face and be like, thanks for being there. But the other thing is, I mean, those people were obviously following the social media and went through the trouble of it. So if I just reopen and like give out those shirts, then what did they, what benefit are they getting from that limited right. edition drop? You know what I mean? So like, but I want it allows you to have other shirts though. And now that someone sees that and sees someone with a Queen City shirt on, maybe it's like, maybe you'll have other funny shirts. We talked about, yeah, we have, for sure. you, you know, know, so. Yeah, no, we'll definitely, we'll definitely be doing some pretty cool merch. I got some ideas. So in the pipeline. So Josh, just quickly before I forget, um, yeah, so you had something stolen off your wall yeah. in the bathroom. Yeah. So I found the original. So I have the original still. I have a copy of the original. Sweet. Um, but I also got an iPad Pro for my birthday-ish thing with an Apple Pencil. Yep. And so I was able to scan it in and I colorized it. So I'll be getting this over to you too so that <laughs> you can Thanks, dude. put that on the wall in there. That's awesome. so and I will, be, the I will be bolting it to the wall this yeah. time. <laughs> I, I, that's one of my issues as a business owner is I believe the best in everybody and I mean, granted, two years, um, you know, I've had maybe something, I can count on one hand how many things have gone missing. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that being a gift from you for our grand opening, you know, really kind of upset me. I mean, there's like an actual Stan Lee signed Deadpool picture in the other bathroom, and they took, they took the one that was obviously worth way more money. 
<laughs> no, I appreciate it. the original too, so I'll get both of them to yeah. you. So if you want to do the black and white one, like original, yeah, but also all... it was funny. It was a first doing some coloring on the actual iPad yeah. to appropriate, but it was a little fun uh, thing. I was like, I got to scan this in so that yeah. I can give it to Josh because I told you I had the extra. So I'm... I want to make sure I wanted to give it to you. Have it back. I, I go in the bathroom and I look at the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I go in the bathroom and I just look at that spot wistfully, like, oh, why, why did you have to do that? Oh, who was that bonehead who took that? <laughs> I did I did some searching, but... I, I yeah. would love to, actually, I could change the text at the top, says, who the hell stole me in the first place? <laughs> who stole me? Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. So, yeah, so, Josh, you don't obviously know when you're going to open back up. Are you hoping that you'll... Take, are you just going to take your time? Even if they say you can open tomorrow, yeah. you should take your time and open oh, yeah. when you feel like it and do the reservations until you're done with that and then open back up? Or is it... If they said you can open tomorrow, I would be like, yeah, I'm all set. I mean, you know, this place is like a mess right now. <laughs> <laughs> everything that is, you know, everything that was where it was is no longer where it was. Um, so we have some work to do and some painting and, you know, Stuff like but it that. won't be till at least June first, anyway. So, so yeah, uh, restaurant as is, as the guidance exists now, restaurants are June first. Um, mm -hmm. Ours are July first. If everything goes well, you know, reading the tea leaves in the news, I'm not really sure how that's going to work out. Um, we are, you know, low population and pretty independent people here in Maine, mm -hmm. so I could see it going along those lines. I would say for us, uh, July first is kind of like our, you know, our ideal goal um if we could open up have everything in place and be fully locked and loaded on july 1st that would be great i do not have any qualms at all about waiting another month past that mm -hmm. um it, it means july would be kind of cool or even august like if you said it was august first that would also be kind of cool because not only is it grand reopening you have your new expansion but also it's to your anniversary, so right. July so, 13th to be. Yeah, July 13th kind of sticking in my mind a little bit. Um, although I do have like multiple family events that occur that same weekend every year. Uh, this year they are not happening, you know, due to reasons. But mm -hmm. um, so I kind of want to change that date a little bit. You know, I mean, nobody would ever really, you know, they're not going to complain if you do your two year on July 20th. But uh, we did that but, at OBC. We were we were uh, January 31st is our or sorry, December 31st is our anniversary for OBC. And we were, I had a conversation with Abe and Heather and Mark and Asa like in October, or no, September of last year saying, let's not do it on New Year's Eve anymore. Cause it's like, there's, if you want to invite, Hey Josh, you come to our anniversary party. Yeah. Josh is like, no, I'm downtown Bangor on New Year's Eve. There's no way I can step away from my yeah. spot. I yeah. want to do an event. So like we're interfering for our event that doesn't have to be on the New Year's Eve. Right. To so we ended up doing it the weekend before, so it was like the weekend between Christmas and New Year's Eve. There was like a there's like a Saturday. We did it on Saturday. It was excellent for us. Yeah. And then we just closed at ten o'clock on New Year's Eve because we're like we're not a place that people come late night. Go downtown Bangor. You go to your college party. Um, so actually moving yours to like the thirty first of July or the first of July or the month of July. Like just being right. like we're doing all kinds of fun things in July. For sure. Because it's our anniversary and <clears throat> yep. no one would question it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm kind of particular about stuff like that, you know, until I realize that the rest of the world is not. And then I'm like, oh, it's fine. But not $7.13 pints all a month. Yeah. <laughs> seven thirteen. There you go, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. But That's yeah, fine. so you don't know when you're opening again, but yeah, we'll, open, I mean, we'll like take I our said, time. Yep, shoot for July 1st as like a goal to kind of get us on our horse and, you know, ride and then we'll see when that ride is over uh you know i i would say august 1st is like probably the end of that period you know if we're not open by august 1st something went wrong come check on me yeah the uh the you guys went to bonnaroo last year you were gonna the, yes. you were supposed to go this year they obviously did they cancel it yet no they did not cancel it okay. um so they pretty early uh, decided that they were going to postpone until mm. September, the end of September, um, which I, I wouldn't mind a fall Bonnaroo because uh, June in Tennessee is yeah. hot and dusty. Oh. And uh, me and Tiff were, we were wiped out at the end of last year and basically walked out of there going, we're never going again. And then like two months later, she's like, so about Bonnaroo. <laughs> and I'm like, 
Yeah, and then the lineup came out, and the lineup was amazing. Um, a lot of our favorite bands were both huge Tool fans. Uh, to see them in that atmosphere would be unreal. Uh, so they, they moved it to the end of September. Uh, we had VIP tickets, you know, $5,000, uh, luxury camping, AC, showers, you know, uh, early entry, side, mm -hmm. side stage passes, all that stuff. Um, all paid off and just looking at the news and the way things are going for festivals, I thought it was better to let that $5,000 sit in my bank account rather than on the credit card. Uh, if it comes down to it, everything clears out. We're good to go. I'm getting online and I'm buying tickets. I don't care. Mm -hmm. The lineup's amazing. But to be honest, I don't really expect it to happen. You're talking about, we're talking about, you know, 10 people this month, 50 people in August if we're lucky. Um, and then you're one month later and you're going to have 80,000 people together in a field. Probably not. So I, I feel like it's going to be like that for the rest of the year. What's that? I feel like I think they'll just say 2021 is when events can start happening again like that. I don't I think they'll let it go throughout the year because there's no real reason. A lot of people postponed it for like from August or July to January or February or, or things like that. Or just said we're not having one this year. It's going to go next year. Next year should be badass come. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. I was pumped because when this the one silver linings was that run the run the jewels Rage Against the Machine tour was postponed. I'm like, oh, this means maybe they'll do it in the fall, the winter. Right. And it will come to Boston and it won't be at Boston College. So I don't have to buy like weekend tickets or anything right. like that. And they rebooked re it and they're not even coming to New England. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, they're the farthest they're coming. They're doing three shows in New York City. Oh. And I was like, ah, I can go to New York City. It's not that far. But I was just like, oh my God, maybe they'll come to like Rock Row in Portland or Westbrook. Right. That would be amazing. Let's do that. Nope, yeah, they're yeah. not even coming at that. <laughs> yeah, R RTJ was on the Bonnaroo lineup too. So um, yeah, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's it's crazy and like we're huge music fans like that's mm -hmm. what we do with our time and money is go around and go to huge shows and festivals um and then i do a lot of shows here like i said well local bands and we've really become kind of a hot spot for that and you know it's really become like a place for the community to come together especially mm -hmm. like in the hardcore community in the metal and uh you know i'm really looking forward to getting back to that because the month of april you know, while we were closed, Mar while the end of March and, and the whole month of April, I had like all of my favorite local bands signed up to play here. We had Holy Filth was coming back, Livid Orange was coming in, Weight was coming in. Um, we had a bunch of bands from Portland, uh, Ballistic Bookings, which does our hardcore shows, had band they started getting bands from out of state coming up, and we had to cancel all of it, and it was heartbreaking. Um, but when we come back, you can, you can fetch your bottom dollar. Yeah there will be some shows and people will be so happy to see each other. That's the thing. I think it's just the community. I think it's like, I had someone text me yesterday and was like, Hey man, I just want to have a beer with you. I yeah. was like, I've done enough of these zoom kind of phone calls with people in general. And just, it's just not the same. Yeah. And it's like, I do want to just sit down and drink something liquid with someone else and right. have a conversation. I don't need to hug people right now. Don't need yeah. to shake your hand. Right. I need to stand six feet way, uh, close, closer than six feet from you. Right. I just need to be in the same area as some people. Yep. I, I love Taylor, but it needs to be someone other than my significant other. It needs to be someone that I don't live with, that I don't have any connection to other than the fact that I'm friends with them. And I need that. It just, it, it's, so I cannot wait for that. So we might do some, some people have talked about, hey, happened to be in the same place at the same time, less than 10 people. We're all 10 feet away from each other just so we can have some beers together and we'll see what happens. Yeah. But sweet yeah i guess you know maintain safety you know first and foremost but i think it'll be interesting to see what like the psychological fallout from this is for everybody and you know are people going to kind of come together and realize what they're missing are we going to start isolating more you know are people realizing like hey this actually isn't so bad you know saving um, money <laughs> yeah, saving money and you know um, like your so place like, is the perfect spot for that because we talked about it is taylor's actually on, on the high risk scale so we don't don't think we'll be going to sit you know at our favorite places like portland pie company and nocturne right away we might they may get our to-go order from them right. because of the fact that we can we want to support them we like them we want to be home um and a lot of these to-go cocktails and beers and stuff like that likely will continue to be allowed to do for the rest of the year 
to let those people not have the capacity at their spot, but still make money. Right. And people still support them. But Queen City is one of the ones that we might go to because we could be like, Josh, excuse me, we want the small theater. Right. We want to have drinks together. We want to be able to watch a movie. We want to be able to go out. We want to be able to say hi to people and be six, 10 feet away from people. But we can't sit in a restaurant, but we could be in that room. So your kind of place would be, might be the one where, you know, it may honestly be the first place we go when we open right. back up because that's You're the, more than welcome. But, but like we, the first thing we will be doing is the ten, the group gatherings that are less than 10 people or so right. and just seeing people. I just need to see other yeah. people. Absolutely. You know, I've seen, I do get the luckiness, the lucky part about it is seeing Abe, Heather, Mark, Asa on a weekly basis because we have our small meetings, but we're spread yeah. out. Um, but like I said, we went hiking a couple weeks ago and did our social distancing and all that stuff. And it was the first time Taylor had seen anybody that she didn't know in real life <laughs> yeah. like we had like in, in a month and a half like we'd gone she'd gone a month and a half she's seen her co-workers because she swings into work once a week and picks up some stuff and she's seen like from a distance some of our friends may drop something off right. but, like other than that she hasn't been in the grocery stores she hasn't been doing any of that stuff because i've been going so it's, it's a weird experience for her i keep pointing at her because she's in the other room but um but yeah so she's looking forward to that aspect of just being able to see people and say hi and yeah. go up to our camp and stuff like that so we're pretty excited for this to be over, but we know it also needs to be done right because if not, then small businesses can't handle this forever. I mean, you can't right. be till no, you can't be, you can be right now. You're happy, yeah. like I said, you're, you're content right now, but you can't go until January or February. Right. There's just no way you can do that. So, yeah. I mean, there's, you know, there's been points, you know, 3 a.m. or whatever, when I'm sitting there and I'm like, should I just cut my losses? You know, am I going to be able to, but the fact of the matter is, you know, like Tiff, Tiff said to me, she's like, yep, it's a hole that we have to dig ourselves out of, but it's our hole, you know, and like, what am I going to do? Go back to bartending? No, thank you. You know, so well, it's the same thing. You, you own your own business. You can't go back to not owning your own. No, I know. <laughs> right, exactly. That's, that's exactly it is, you know, that's part of being a small business owner is being able to think on your feet, be adaptable, um, give people what they want and still be able to adhere to every rule and regulation in the book. And uh, so that's what we're going to do is just press forward and, like I said, come back better than ever. And the benefit you have is you have yourself and, you know, a boss to think about. And that's it. It's not, right. you don't have 16 employees. They have to worry about their livelihoods or anything like that. You're, you can be selfish in the aspect that it is really only you. Right. Um, and that, you know, boss doesn't take much to take care of. Well, he's, he takes a lot to take care of. but doesn't, I, Yeah, he's a lot to take care of, but not, not financially. I sent him a hundred <laughs> bucks like a month ago and, I, you know, as far as I know, he's still alive. So, um, but yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we'll be good. You know, it's just, you know, looking out for my family really is, you know, my biggest concern. And so far we're doing pretty well. So, um, luckily, you know, money came through for Tiffany's unemployment and I got mine finally last week. So things are looking up, getting some stuff put together. And I mean, we've, we went to, we actually went to Home Depot last week as much as I had to do it. But, you know, you try to order things on their website and nothing is available for online ordering. Nothing's available for curbside pickup. So we strapped on the masks and dashed through the store and, you know, got a bunch of mulch and paint and all that stuff. And we're, we're in here working just about every day. So, you know, I'm getting to that point where I'm like excited to mm -hmm. really get this place open, like show everybody what we've done. I mean, are you back and just quickly, I, I like to wrap up here, but the, the, yeah. you back in that hole when you, right just prior when you opened, where you're like, I can't wait yeah. to see the new and thing. It's actually like kind that. of cool because it was like starting to get a little like stale for me. I was like running out of, I was running out of energy for social media. I was running out of energy for coming up with events, which, you know, that's been helped a little bit by people coming to me for events now. So I don't have to actually schedule everything like I did in the mm -hmm. beginning. But it was just kind of like, all right, everything for me is like problem solving and like thinking about problems and figuring out what the best way to do something or the coolest way to do something. And it, all of that was kind of falling by the wayside where it was just maintenance. And it's just like building a little bit at a time. Now I get to just like tear the whole place down and build it right back up again. So I'm like, all right, now I get to, you know, not that I love construction or anything, but, you know cutting cutting holes in the wall to replace the drywall in spots was like pretty exciting for me you know? and who knows two two years from now three years from now four years from now you just go okay we're closing for two weeks 
yep. we're going to renovate the theater now. It's been five years, four years, whatever. Yeah. And we need to just do it again. We need to update yep. higher, you know, we're going to upgrade the projectors or we're going to do yeah. something. And it gives you that ability that you know that you can plan ahead for it. You can do it. Absolutely. And you'll be able to refresh some things and stuff like that. But you can follow Josh online, right? So yep. how, can you, how can you follow Queen City Cinema Club? Where can you find you? Uh, so we are on Facebook, uh, Queen City Cinema Club. We are on Instagram, Queen City Cinema Club. Um, and I have a Twitter account. I don't really use it too much for the business. It's just not, it hasn't really worked out too well. Every once in a while, I'll retweet some cool movie thing or something like that. But, um, and then you can email us at info at queencitycinemaclub.com with any questions. Um, but really the best way to keep track of everything uh, as far as what's going on here is through our Facebook and Instagram. Um, and then our website will be getting an update before we open with all of our new kind of rules and regulations because we're going to be changing some things about how things are charged and how we set up parties and all that, um, partially due to the coronavirus and partially because there were some changes that needed to be made anyway for the health mm. of the business and for things to work better for our customers as well because you get bottlenecks and you got to figure out a way to you know get that working so um but yeah facebook and instagram is the best way to keep track of everything that's sweet so, yeah so i mean we're new here this is our you got josh's guest number one technically there was a guest number one that the audio did not work the way i wanted it to work so he's coming <laughs> back to do it again uh a little while so josh ended up being number one which i've always wanted him number one i just didn't the schedule is too right. weird and I didn't do it. And uh, so um, follow him, give him a reach, uh, give him a like on Facebook or follow him on Instagram, visit his website, look for when he's going to open again. Cause you definitely need to check him out. Um, and then uh, you can follow us at just another podcast on Instagram and on uh, Facebook. We have a, a Facebook page. Uh, we're on Spotify podcast, Apple podcasts, YouTube. Um, so you can follow us there and see it. We're going to try to do every Wednesday, like, we record today's Monday. We're recording this, but it's going to be for Wednesday with a couple other extra ones in there. I'm recording with my dad tomorrow nice. for a special Friday podcast release for my birthday. So we're going to talk memories and, and things with my dad, which will be pretty cool. So, and you can catch Josh and I and Ben, uh, Brian Keezer, excuse me, on the PCTC uh, stream, uh, streamcast on Facebook Live, uh, which will be tonight because it'll be Wednesday at the time um, yeah. and see what we talk about there. Probably talk a little bit of what we talked about here, but. I'm sure yeah. we'll talk nerd stuff too and geek out a little bit about Absolutely. comic books and movies and stuff. So, um, but yeah, thanks for joining me, Josh. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. I'll come no back problem. anytime. We can get into some uh, other stuff, you know, not, not coronavirus related, not business related and have some arguments over some Marvel or Star Wars or something. That'd be fun to do some sort of like just obviously just talk about Queen City for a little bit, but just go on about, yep. you know, whatever's going on in, in the, Absolutely. in the uh, world of, movie nerd nerdism and uh video games and comic books and Absolutely. all kinds of stuff so sweet thanks for joining me yeah thanks man